Hi all, I'm Jeanette Keynes from Jewelry Arts Inc. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make and fuse a fine silver bezel so you have a beautiful tight fit for your stone. You don't have to be afraid of fusing anymore. So I'll just, there we go. So we have all the stones lined up, gorgeous. So what I'm gonna do is just grab the first one and take it out and we're gonna work right in front of us. And you know, I usually put a little tiny dab of wax on the bench or you can use double stick tape so that I don't spend all my time on the floor looking for my fucking stone because that's what they like to do. Remember with the wax, so don't get carried away. If you use a big lump of wax, it'll just become so messy that it'll be counterproductive. Okay, there we go. So we're making an oval bezel, right? And we've talked before about people like, oh, why can't I get an oval bezel mandrel? They're never the right oval. They're never exactly the right shape as your stone. So I don't normally use them. I just use my chain nose pliers and I use a round mandrel just to start the first end. Okay, so I've got my nice long strip. First step is always, we're just gonna cut it nice and straight because that's gonna be half of our seam eventually. These are lovely, mm -hmm. very juicy. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my chain nose pliers. I'm gonna grab the ends and I'm just gonna kind of make my first bend so that it looks sort of like that because I'm, I'm, I'm guesstimating. I'm looking at this curve and I'm going, okay, that looks, that looks like it'll fit. And because I've made a billion bezels, that is indeed the right curve. You want to just come in, mm -hmm. just if you can, see from the top. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important when you're making bezels that you work right under your nose because you need to be able to look straight down over the stone in the bezel to see if there's gaps or if it fits correctly, okay? So what I usually do in a case like this, hold it down with my finger and just press it around. I can also use a wood dowel, which is nice. It helps you to move stuff. But remember, if you use the wood dowel, you can't put it up here and press in because you don't want to take your bezel and create a cone. So you would want to press it parallel, do you see what I mean, with the bench so that you can move it, but without squishing it in. And then I usually flip it in an effort to keep your bezel straight up and down. I'm usually flipping the bezel back and forth as I work, okay? It's kind of an easy way to make sure that you don't have a real cone going. And I can just press on a little bit to make sure there's no extra space. And I'm gonna stick my head in here, press on the end a little more. Because I don't want a loose bezel, that's just gonna, when you go to set, it takes so much more time and energy to set it and it never looks as nice and clean. So I really want it to just go in and out and that's it. Oh, and I'm sorry, I forgot to ask you, do you have a Sharpie? Oh. Because what I'm gonna do now that I have it, that pressed really nice and tight close together there, I'm gonna mark right where it would overlap with the Sharpie and then I know where to cut. you. Okay, so I usually hold it together because like I said, I want to make sure I've got a nice tight fit. And then, you see that? Like right where they would meet, I put that little mark. Okay. So then I can just pop my stone out, pull it open a little bit, and make a nice straight cut. And remember the whole key about cutting straight is about like, you know, getting your feet on the floor and getting your shoulders nice and straight. However contorted you normally sit when you go to cut, pause and like line yourself up, okay? Um, another thing with your seams, you wanna cut this one time. You don't wanna like, oh, let me cut it and then I'll go back and refine. Get the right size and just mark it and cut it once. You drive yourself crazy. Uh, going in again and again. 
like so. We cut, okay? And then what I would do is we'll butt the ends together in preparation for fusing. I grab the, the one side like so. And I kind of go past the seam once or twice, like that. Line it up, give it a nice squish, like so. And then the next thing is I hold it up to the light and look through it and make sure there's no light shining through. Because when you look down from here, everything looks great. You hold it up to the light, you may see a whole different situation. This actually looks good, so I'll have you double check it so mm -hmm. you can see what I'm talking about. But then you can just take this, because I don't think we're gonna, do you wanna fuse this right now or do you wanna go through and make them? Should I, shouldn't I make them and then go back and fuse them or? or no, you know what, or, let's go ahead and fuse because actually that makes more sense. That way we know it's good and you, we'll put it away, all right? Okay, so go 100% with you. Yeah, one. let's do that. Because maybe it'll be less confusing than going in and out more, you know? It's too less than my lost practice for three. It's very easy <laughs> to keep track of things. Let me just go grab the, the kiln lid and we'll do a little fusing demo. So although I'm sure you remember this from doing it before, <laughs> she giggles. <laughs> You have to do things again and again and again to really like remember them and learn them and whatever. So never feel bad about that. So I've got my seam facing up. I've got this squished down to like a little sort of peanut shape or bean shape because the further up in the air the seam is, the harder it is to control the heat. You wanna take a look? Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna use a zero tip. I'm going to use the lid to cast a shadow. I'm going to get my elbow up in the air because I want the, the torch straight up and down. Because if you're at an angle like this, what happens is you're looking in one spot, someplace else is getting too hot, and you melt things inadvertently. So it's really important for control to keep mm -hmm. it pretty much straight up and down. Okay. So I circle it. And you'll see what happens is the seam starts to glow brighter than everything else. When that happens, that means it's time to get in there and fuse. You see that, how it starts to get brighter mm -hmm. and brighter the hotter it gets? There you go. So then I pull back, use my feather tip, and you just tickle it, and the seam goes away. And that's it. If you want to get a little close-up of that, Alexis, but that's what you're looking for. Because basically in fine silver, the seam will disappear. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying it's invisible, but you're not gonna see like a clear line there anymore. If you still mm -hmm. see the line clearly, it means we need to fuse a little bit more. Okay. okay? So what you can do with this if you want is you can uh, put it on the mandrel, roll it round, we'll squeeze it, check it on the stone, make sure the fit is great, and then we'll take it and the stone, put it in the wax box, get the and next then, stone out, you know what I mean? And okay. that way, It'll keep us from getting uh, mixed Sorry. up.